Hi, I'm Nat Sakimura, the chairman of the OpenID Foundation and a senior researcher at Nomura Research Institute. Today, I want to talk a bit about the new identity protocol we are building, OpenID Connect, an identity layer on top of OAuth 2.0. But before diving into it, I need to define identity, which we often talk vaguely. Luckily, ITUT and ISA has defined it in the IT context for us. It is set of attributes related to an entity. To understand this definition, we have to understand the entity identity model. Entity is like us, human being, or machine, service, whatever. But we don't perceive entities directly, but indirectly through various attributes about the entity. Like he has blonde hair, wears glasses, 6 feet 5 inches tall, and so on. And we want to express ourselves depending on who we are talking to by controlling what set of attributes, identity, we show. So your identity to your friends and identity to your boss are naturally different. So we have multiple identities. Men are said to have typically a few identities, like work, husband, father. And women have a lot more. We pick and choose which identity we use, depending on the context. The same holds for websites. You want to use different identities depending on the sites you go to get better service. That's the identity layer. And with OpenID Connect, we have chosen to build it over all to that all. This is often called authentication as well. But you may ask, why not just auth? Facebook does the same with auth, don't they? Well, not quite. Auth itself has no notion of identity. Auth is an access granting protocol, also known as delegation. Alice granting access to Betty's profile data to Cindy does not mean that Alice is Betty, nor Cindy is Betty. Unfortunately though, many services make this mistake and make it easy for a service to impersonate a user. Facebook's case is different. They don't use auth for authentication as is, but have built an extension called signed request, which is essentially the same as the OpenID Connect's ID token, except for the fact that it works only with Facebook as the identity provider and the signature format is proprietary. While OpenID Connect works with multiple IDPs and uses ITF's JSON Web Signature Standard, in essence, what it does is to provide the websites who got authenticated, where, when and how it was, what attribute he wants to give to you and why. All of these defined in an interoperable manner. That's OpenID Connect. It's interoperable, simple and mobile friendly, secure and flexible. To be interoperable, we have to define a standard way of requesting and responding claims. So we have defined standard scopes, a method to ask for more granular claims, ID token, and user info endpoint from which you can get the attributes as well as the translated tokens. It's also very simple. It is JSON-based, REST-friendly. In simplest cases, it's just copy and paste to implement a simple relying party. And mobile and apps-friendly because that was an explicit design principle, and thanks to Earth too. Its security model can scale all the way up to extremely secure, spanning from ISO 29115 level of assurance 1 to 4 leveraging on crypto and other techniques. It's also very flexible. You can make a granular request through JSON-based request object, which makes data minimization easy. To return the claims, you have the choice of aggregated and distributed claims with different privacy characteristics. OpenID Connect not only supports large identity providers, but you can actually have your own identity providers. For example, you can choose to use a dedicated identity provider on your phone.
current status of the specs are that they are waiting for some underpinnings such as Jose's specs and Webfinger go final. Once that's done, we can finalize OpenID Connect and put it into the final membership vote. In the meantime, people are implementing current draft. Right now, 14 solutions are performing interrupts, encompassing over 120 feature tests. So, start building OpenID Connect now.